Hello, today is Saturday, October 17, 2020. I am making a book review about Rubicon, The Last Years of the Roman Republic by Tom Holland. This book was published in 2003. It has 11 chapters and uh, I prefer uh, a book review on the uh, um, it is very important like um, to understand some of the concepts rather than just going to say XYZ this is what happened in this timeline or anything like that but understanding what does Rubicon means um, an act of winning a game against an opponent who is total scores score is less than 100 in which case the loser score is added to rather than subtract from the winners uh, but um, what does Rubicon means about crossing a revocably commit to a course of action make a fateful and final decision for example once Julius uh, once he submitted his resignation he had crossed the Rubicon this phrase allude to Julius Caesar crossing the Rubicon Rubicon River thereby starting a war against Pompeii and the Roman Senate. Um, <clears throat> is there a body of water Rubicon? The Latin word Rubico comes from the adjective rubis meaning red. The river was so named because its water are color red by mud deposit. So I'm gonna start reading the book review that I prepared. During the Roman Republic, the river Rubicon marked the boundary between the Roman province of um, Caesar Lapine, Gaul, to the northeast and Italy proper, controlled directly by Rome and its allies to the south. On the northwestern side, the river Arno border, a much broader and more critical waterway, flows westward from the Apennine Mountains. Okay, that's the, where the Rubicon will be located. Julius Caesar paused on the bank, paused on the banks of Rubicon in 49 BC. Perhaps on January 10, Julius Caesar led a single legion, 13 Gemini, south over the Rubicon from the Caesar Pine Gaul to Italy to make his way to Rome. In doing so, he deliberately broke the law, limiting his imperial making armed conflict inevitable so i'm not able really to say good the italian names very well so i apologize for that one and i don't mean to respect anybody's background or any individual so tunis depicts caesar as undecided as he approached the river and attributes the crossing to a supernatural apparition it was reported that caesar dined with solus her tios opios Barbos and Sarpos, Rufos, on the night after his crossing. So we are talking about power being diminished. Um, I'm not advocating of a dictator, but um, it is very important that one person is um, directing. For example, even in Canada, when a political party forms a government um, that party needs to have vote of confidence unless it will be it will collapse that government will collapse and um, there's a political science terminology it is called whip uh, who will make sure all members are gonna vote the same way when they're trying to pass a law or legislate a bill but what happens when a power is divided among three individuals? So there is there's a disintegration of power and it causes problem. And that's why Afghanistan is having a problem because um, one person is not making a decision. It's divided, power disintegrated among the feudal lords or the war warlords we have. And that's the case with Italy. So three individuals are making a I'm not able to pronounce this uh, English word very well. It is a, a tramvirate. What is a tramvirate? 
is a political regime ruled or dominated by three powerful individuals known as tramel. The arrangement can be formal or informal. Though the three are normally equal, this is rarely the case in reality. The term can also be used to describe a state with three different military leaders who all claim to be the sole leader. And um, there are different ways of looking at it. Some of them are involved in uh, making sure the coin is being minted um, or um, the executive body carrying their task. So it has different way of looking into it. Um, but uh, what comes down into us in Caesar was an ambitious man and he was a wealthy man and that's why he was able to be elected to the power position so he had served the republic for eight years in the Gallic Wars fully conquering Gaul's region after the Roman Senate demanded Caesar disband his army and return home as a civilian he refused he crossed the Rubicon River with his army and plunged Rome into a Caesar's civil war in 49 BC. After defeating the last of opposition, Caesar was appointed as a dictator forever. So, he has become a dictator and there are the other individuals who don't like him and they want to see him gone. So Julius says that the Roman dictator was assassinated by a group of senators on the March 15 of 44 BC during a Senate meeting at Pompeii theaters in Rome. The senators stabbed Caesar 23 times. The senators claimed to be acting over fear that Caesar unprecedented concentration of power during his dictatorship undermined the Roman Republic and presented the deed, the deed as an act of tyranny. At least six senators were party to the conspiracy led by Marcus Brutus Gauzes and Decimus Brutus. Despite the death of Caesar, the conspirators were unable to restore the institution of the Republic. The assassination ramification led the liberator civil war and ultimately to the period of the Roman Empire. So, this is when Julius Caesar dies, it causes a problem. There's also the story of Mark Antony who goes to the Egypt and trying to uh, concentrate his power over the and he's indulging himself um, uh, with an extravagant lifestyle. He was not paying attention to politics, he was not paying attention to military leadership, and when the uh, Roman forces are facing him, um, he's forced to commit suicide. Um, his wife, Cleopatra, also commits suicide. He had a son with her and that's it that's what is coming down into it so um, there's a bible verse and i'm not using a bible as a theological point of view but i'm it's it bible is a beautiful book uh, and what does it says a divided house will collapse and that's what is really coming down into it uh, and i'm not saying that um, dictatorship is good or anything like that uh, because whoever wants to run a nation needs consent and will of people and needs to use wisdom really wisdom to do it uh, but what we have because the Romans were not united uh, they were divided among themselves they were fighting among themselves the book um, talks about how um, they were defeated by the Persians Parthian forces and um, the, um, Persia was a mighty force it's not just because the Romans were divided uh, so it, it's a really good book read it and i enjoyed it thanks um, author tom Holland.